Hello, this is Athena Jezik again. I'm back with Karina, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit of work for the shoulders and the neck. And I'm going to be giving you some other little tips that you can play with and see how it works if you're a body worker. So here we go. I want to invite you to explore my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment is going to take you beyond the work of massage therapy. It will take you into the world of the subtle anatomy. There's some few things that change a little bit in my practice, as I mentioned before. Uh, I'm not doing a lot of massage. I'm doing other work, so I'm going to be integrating some of that in, so you'll get to see a little bit more. I want to just say that a lot of this work that I do gets incredible results, and I'm learning that it's all technique and skill in a person's hands so the more skilled a person can get then it's amazing what you can find in the body and also how you can exercise the use of energy in your own self and to also help the process go along forward in even more dynamic results so anyway that's for another time so I'm going to start out here by um, checking her checking her shoulders. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on. Okay, so I'm going to just and up the neck on the shoulders and across the upper chest. Now the shoulder girdle is interesting. You know, you have the neck here where it's the spine and then you have the clavicle that comes right here and the the whole shoulder girl, then you have this structure, the arms and the scapula that's only attached to the skeleton right here at the sternoclavicular joint. And so that joint is really vital to uh, be sure that that's in alignment if people have shoulder problems. Just a little hint to you out there. That's one thing I'm going to be showing at a later time and some of the things I'm up to is how to align those little bones. Now I'm just checking the range of motion for her head right now because sometimes you can feel tension in the muscles. It may be the, the bones or it may just be tight muscles, but usually if people track it back, it's almost always a bone misalignment but it doesn't have to be misaligned very much, sometimes just a small fraction of an inch. Now I'm gonna be coming up the neck, and then I'll show you where I'm going with this. Then I'm gonna be coming up the neck, and then to the base of the skull, and then separate that there. So it'll be like this, and open on both sides at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it up here, and hold her head, and then open it up right I'm running right along the base of the spine I mean skull right along the base of the skull right here I'm running up the spine my hands are slipping underneath there lifting the head and then my fingers curl a little bit and then I'm sliding it out there's a lot of tension that is held in the back of the neck right where the head comes in a lot of tension that's because we tend to put our neck forward when we're sitting at computers or looking down at our phones when we're walking down the street when we should be just enjoying the street but a lot of people like to still look at their phones so all of that head stuff going forward and thrusting forward is kind of wreaks havoc on the back and the rest of the body actually for the alignment purposes now here I'm just going back and forth right on the top of the shoulders here. This is basically the trapezius muscle and the levator scapula muscle. So my fingers get underneath there. And then along the clavicles. And you can go down a little bit along the sternum. That's a point that is not very worked very often and along the clavicle. 
And then you can also go around the shoulders and just check all this. All these muscles need to be relaxed. You know, a lot of times frozen shoulders are, people just look for the muscles, but they never consider the joints and the bones underneath might be the problem. I know for from experience that I've seen people that have worked for several months to try to get rid of a frozen shoulder, but after working subtle alignment techniques, it's just a matter of a little tiny misalignment, oftentimes anyway, of the sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and then sometimes that takes the shoulder a little bit out of joint. Now she's laying in this position and when we worked on her back earlier, I couldn't feel the crepitus quite as thick as it is now. So there's a real big jump on particularly the right. She's right-handed. So that's probably because she works this arm a little bit more. Okay, now for the front of the neck, I'm gonna put a little tiny bit more oil. Now there's a sternocleomastoid muscle, and what you can do there is you can kind of grab a hold of this it. This alignment you want to be very gentle through here. Often the root cause of chronic pain, pain injuries, grab that and, and chronically high levels that of stress hormones. Bit. Same with the other side, or you can pull it up and just kind of pinch it right here. Just hold it, and hold it like that. Bit. You can work under the chin, the jaw area, and then now the thing about getting to the front of the neck is you have you have the a lot of structures there that are needing to be dealt with very carefully. Um, now. There, the pituitary, or excuse me, the um, thyroid is behind the trachea and the esophagus and those structures there, and it's right behind that. One of the things you can do to check the neck is you can kind of get on that thyroid and you can move it back and forth. Sometimes it's easier to find just to take one hand but I'm going to show you with both hands so you can just slide it kind of back and forth to, to give it some mobility and you can also get kind of underneath it and lift it up and down up and there's I'm kind of lifting it up and then just move it back and forth Working down the neck a little bit here. Okay. So this, and then to the side of the neck, we're gonna hold the head and turn the neck to the side and then just draw your thumbs just along the all the all the muscles of the neck, the scalenes and the trapezius that goes up into the neck, the levator and then the sternocleomastoid. And it's wise not to do too much work on the inside of the sternocleomastoid where the throat and all that is. Although you do want to sometimes check the position of the hyoid bone, which is a floating bone, because if that gets a little bit out of kilter, it's gonna affect the, the way the neck feels and functions. So I'm just going along there, the neck feels good. 
muscle wise. Now there's a little neck, before I get to the shoulders, there's a little neck thing that I think is real fun for people. This is like called on winding the neck where you're gonna pull it to the side and then roll the head and then kind of just move it around. But you want to go slow with it and you want to brace the neck and cradle the head as much as possible. A lot of the work that you're going to do with massage therapy is you, you need to really support the body of the person. And I personally think that it's a good idea for people to understand how things feel in their own body when things are twisted because I've seen some pretty rough massage moves on legs and hips not really understanding how those bones really move how they are supposed to really move so it's a good idea to understand that alignment again I'm I'm really all about alignment okay now the other one I was going to show you here is lifting the head up placing your other hand underneath and bracing it there and then letting the head drop and then stretching it out and bring it up and letting it drop. So you're kind of pushing upward, but not really, you're holding it, but it feels like there's a lot of weight that's going on that supporting hand on the neck. There's a lot of weight there as the head falls back. So here, I'm going along the trapezius again. And I'm gonna get my hand underneath and I'm gonna Cradle my fingers, curl my fingers right along the scapula, the edge of the scapula, sort of high on it. It's kind of a flat part, and then it kind of curves over to the outside, so you want to be at the flatter part. And you can hold that there, and then you can work, the, work into that scapula. See if you can get it to loosen a little bit from this position. And then you can also slide the hand underneath again. This is hard to see. But then to align that position, sometimes if the shoulders are rolling too far forward, then you can hold them there and hold the other hand on the shoulder and just wait for a few minutes. And once you feel the muscles relaxing, as you pull out from underneath, you want to draw the shoulder down. And if that didn't align it, there's another technique to do where you slide underneath underneath the scapula. Now this is like a like you're you're feeling the scapula in your hand with the point of the scapula at the fingers. And then you're just gonna be holding that there and kind of pulling the scapula down and back. So it's so you feel that this this shoulder needs to go back more. And that's what I want to have this do. A little bit over the deltoid, see if we can open it up a little more. Now see where her shoulder is. Once this relaxes, I'm pulling downward on the, and it's not a pull-pull, it's just a, like a stretching it hand is on the shoulder. Now this is where you, it's really important to look at anatomy books. You really need to know where you're placing your hands. So now I'm going to, in a minute, it's starting to soften. I can feel all that going on. Now I'm going to lift her up, lift up her scapula a little bit, and then roll her arms back. And there that shoulder is dropped down a little bit more. How did that feel? I think that's a new one. And then up through the deltoid. Tie that all in. Okay, so I'll go to the other side and see if you can see a little bit differently how I do it. Okay, that feels pretty good. You can see that this shoulder is definitely more relaxed and it is in a little bit different position. A lot of this uh, structure stuff is so subtle that you really have to train your eyes. Now because her shoulder is down there a little bit more, you can see that this shoulder is a little bit higher, but it's really, really subtle. So we're going to go along and we're going to first do the first one. I'm just going to 
work the neck a little bit on this side. It's that levator scapula muscle that tends to draw the shoulders up and boy when that thing gets in a position to where that's all it knows it will keep your shoulders like earrings and then the tension is just going to stay in there and it's really not a comfortable way for the body to be. So I've got this is the right side and it's always tighter. So I'm right on the edge of the scapula, curling my fingers and going a little bit under the scapula. And now I'm waiting. I'm gonna, okay, let's wait a little bit longer. And now I'm going to kind of pull out and down and holding that shoulder and then I'm going to go underneath again. What I do here is I go underneath the sheet because I've noticed that oftentimes it, when I do this in my practice now there's people have different clothing on and my fingers get caught in the clothing and I can't move. So you just if you're doing this work you're going to have to figure out the best way you can get to what you need to get to. And then we're going to pull that down the scapula down, I mean, <laughs> and I'll continue to hold the shoulder, urging the, or urging the shoulder to roll back and not be so rolled forward. It's just positional things and, you know, the way we walk and the way we sit and the problem with a lot of that is the, the brain will begin to get a certain pattern and it'll become a muscle memory pattern. And so what this work does by going slow at it is it helps the brain to make a new neural pathway so that the pathway um, can develop into a new pattern and give the body a little bit of an option for which muscle memory it wants to hold. The more that the, oh, there was some uh, big release in some muscles back there. So. So the more you do a, a, a movement over and over and over, if it's in the wrong position, that will become the, the muscle memory. And it's kind of hard to change that out. It takes a lot of work, but eventually it will happen. Okay, now I'm getting ready. What I'm doing is I'm going to take my bottom hand, lift it up, and draw out and place that shoulder down. Bring your arm down. now. It's much more level. It's almost like the other one went farther. But there is a difference there. I'm just going to check that other shoulder. That one went down very well. And there's that one. Looks pretty balanced. We don't ever have perfect balance, but we can be in a good alignment. Sometimes muscles are a little bit more developed on one side than the other, which throws us off. And we can just go a little with the deltoid. Work that. So we want this shoulder joint to be nice and loose. Okay, so I'm going to rotate this shoulder a little bit as well. And then you can stretch again across this, the uh, pectoral muscle. And also in here, now this is where it's very ticklish on a lot of people, but it just you can grab the pectoral here and just kind of work it to make sure that it's soft. And the other side, because that is, um, it's not totally into the, um, shoulder work but it does it does have its connections into areas of the shoulder um, or or parts that affect the shoulder all right so now we want to just do another little movement of the head 
It's flowing very fluid. It feels very fluid. And then placing the head down so it's straight. Now you want to always look for the chin lining up with the um, sternum. And she looks good. So there we have it. We have a little bit of shoulder and neck work that you can play with and see how it works for you if you're out there doing massage therapy. If not, then thank you so much for viewing and we'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed the videos that Karina and I have put together over the years, I want to invite you to explore my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment. It is going to take you beyond the work of massage therapy. It will take you into the world of the subtle anatomy. Misalignment of the subtle structures is often the root cause of chronic pain, injuries, and chronically high levels of stress hormones. In this course, you will learn about the subtle anatomy and a protocol for assessing and aligning the subtle structures. I've created a free video series that will teach you some valuable techniques for relaxing your clients and an introduction to subtle alignment. Simply join my email list to receive the free video series.